Welcome to my garage, where today we'll be unboxing the Opus 1200. So here she is, the Opus Exodus 1200. You have three AC outlets, pure sine wave here, four DC here, plus you have the 12 volt, five and a half millimeter, and the kind of car charger port right here. It comes with the car charging cable, which is handy, and of course an AC cable. As you can see, it has 1200 watts of inverter power and a 992 watt hour battery. Right here on the top is a QR code that I'll be scanning later for the, um, the, the app, which you can use with this. It's the only one of the Exodus line that you can charge with an app. Over here on the side are the charging ports, and you get this nice little tip talking about how you need to fully jar, drain and recharge on the first use to preserve battery life. And so we'll be doing that here momentarily. And of course, how to keep the battery life extended. Um, you've got your input for the solar charger, but also that's where you would plug in um, your car charger here, any kind of DC input, the plug for your AC, and then of course a fuse, giant handle on the back, not really much else, Oops. fans on the side, feet on the bottom, it's about 24, 23 pounds, something like that. It's a pretty solid little unit, um, not super heavy, but of course it's supposed to be used um, as you are out and about. You can use it in your house. You can also take it to the ball game. You can take it on a camping trip. You can power your camper. You can power your campsite. Um, I primarily will be using it um, for emergency backup power and whenever we go camping. So uh, let's go ahead and get it powered on and um, get it charging up and then I'll discharge it. Okay, so we got it charged. And now I'm gonna start a discharge cycle. I want to discharge it 100% is what they recommend. Um, I'm gonna use this 1500 watt ceramic heater. Now it's rated at 1500 watts, but it actually spikes significantly over 1500 watts. So even though there's a boost um, power on this, and um, I, I don't think that I'm gonna be able to run it on high. I've done a couple of quick tests, and it seems like when I run it on high, it'll throw it into overload. So I'm gonna run it on low, which still is gonna draw several hundred watts. So let's get that going. Hear the fan kicking on. Turn on the AC side. That kicked on, but it's not on yet. And I actually have my little uh, test meter here. We'll see how many kilowatt hours it actually runs. Um, and so we'll get it started. All right, so that's low, and we're already up to about 980 watts of power coming out. And so in a second, it looks like it's gonna run about 59 minutes an hour before that this runs out. So while that's running, um, and we're, we're testing how much power it actually is gonna put out uh, on the efficiency of this, uh, I wanted to talk a minute about getting the, uh, the app going. So let me see if I can get my, uh, app record, my screen recording going here. Um, so the Clean Energy app, was fairly easy to download, but one thing that you need to know before you will actually be able to use it um, is that you need to hit this center button, this IOT button, and then you get this flashing Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So whenever I go to the app, you should be able to see it now. It comes up, um, I've input my information, and I've got uh, my device in here, um, which is the 1200, the Exodus 1200. You know, one of the reasons that I wanted to use a heater is because uh, these things don't like um, really cold temperatures. And we did just have a winter storm last night. Um, we didn't get a lot of ice or snow, but it is fairly chilly out here in the garage. So I got the heater running right next to this, so it should keep it going. But you can see on the screen here, it shows that the temperature is 75 degrees. Um, the uh, AC is putting out 654 watts of power. Um, I can also turn off and on the DC and AC side. And I can switch over here on my settings. I can go in charging mode, fast charging or slow charging. So that's kind of um, the main thrust of the app. I'll tell you that being able to just sit 
um, on my couch, pull up the app and check to see how the charging was going or how much power is being used or whatever. That was a really handy feature that, that I enjoyed so far. Uh, let me tell you just a little bit about um, the, the first charge of this. And so I actually got word from um, Opus uh, last night. The stated charging time, you know, is a certain amount, but this first initial charge uh, takes longer for some reason. And so they actually asked me to uh, monitor how long it takes to charge um, in, a, in subsequent uh, discharges and recharging and stuff like that. So I'm happy to do it. I didn't really pay much attention to how long it was taking to charge because I just plugged it in and knew it was going to take some time and went on and just did some things. I wasn't going to start this discharge until the next day anyway. So it didn't really bug me. Um, but I did notice um, that it did take, you know, a few hours initially, um, not a huge amount of time, but a few hours to, to kind of get that first charge up to 100%. It kind of hung around 99% for me. It's something to do with the battery management system, and uh, especially on this first one, they're just, it's how they're setting the battery up. I don't fully understand how it works. That's why they have um, fancy engineers with fancy degrees, um, but I'm like, great. So we'll um, definitely be checking to see how long it takes to recharge the unit after um, we've discharged it here um, for this. So we'll time that out. As you can see, in just in the time that we've been talking here, we've already dropped down to 92%. Um, I've got my meter up there, um, and in a little under an hour, we should have this done and be able to see exactly how many watt hours were put out to run the heater. You may have noticed my little Opus Exodus 600 sitting over here next to the heater. My next video will be an in-depth comparison between these two. I definitely think that there are some situations where the smaller, lighter, uh, power station is probably more appropriate um, than the larger, more capable power station that the 1200 is. Uh, so far, I have been really, really happy um, with everything that I've seen from both of these boxes. So I will get back with you with a little bit of an update on how well this did over the next hour. So we're closing in on an hour and 10 minutes of use. And so far we've used 730 something watt hours of power and let's see how much time is left it's like seven percent so we'll see where we land um, on this how much power actually was put out this first time we've done the discharge we're still putting out about 650 watts on this low setting of this heater something that's somewhat surprising is we actually hit zero a minute or two ago and the battery is still putting out power, 650 watts of power to the, to the heater. I'm not sure if that's just a reserve time they have built in there. Normally, I would never run it completely out, but of course on this first one, we're trying to completely discharge the battery before we charge it back up again. All right, that is the end of that. We got the error O2 there, and that means that we have completely depleted the battery. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in and get it starting again, and I'm gonna check and see exactly where we ended up on the uh, the, the usage, the, the power that actually was transmitted through the AC port. All right, so I have quick charge on. You can see it's pulling um, 500, 600 watts, 590, 600 watts worth of power into it right now. So as you can see, we ran my 1500 watt ceramic space heater on the low setting for about an hour and 16 minutes. It was a pulling around 650 watts the whole time. Um, it went for 807 watt hours, which if you do the math, 807 divided by 992 watt hours means that we hit an 81.35 percentage efficiency rating as far as how the um, AC power is passed through the system. Obviously the inverter is going to take some power. The fan was running a good bit because it was warm um, during the time it got up to like 100 degrees inside according to the app. So 80% um, is kind of a benchmark. Uh, there have been some reviews um, of like the Mega Series and maybe Titan that have actually hit 85 and 90% as far as efficiency. I haven't actually tested the efficiency of my 600 yet. Um, but 80% is kind of like if you hit 80 you're like, this is a, a, a good quality inverter is what most reviewers online say. After the first discharge test, I had some conversation with people and there was a question about whether that efficiency of 81 point something percent might have been because of it being the first discharge or something. 
and I'd wanted to test this on my refrigerator in a way it's a full-size side-by-side refrigerator I'll put the model number on the screen and so I thought well let's just see how long it runs um, my fridge before it discharges today so that's what we're gonna do so the refrigerator is already chilled I just turned it off um, before I could plug it in and so uh, it'll just run throughout the day we don't run the ice maker it's one of the big power usages, um, but otherwise we'll just use the fridge throughout the day as um, a normal uh, appliance. Well, once again, we are at 0% on the battery. Um, I should say this you know, has lasted more than 10 hours, which is more than I expected this full-size fridge to last today on this battery. This actually lasted so long, I was planning to uh, do a little side-by-side -side, uh, solar and AC charging. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the sun has gone down behind the trees in my backyard, so even when this finishes, there's just not enough sunlight out there to give it a good test. So uh, great for the 1200 because it lasted several hours longer than I, I anticipated. Overall, I'd have to say that my first initial test and the overview and the performance of this kind of in the real world with my refrigerator um, has been really good, um, you know, uh, as far as the refrigerator goes, far beyond what I expected. I expected it to be in the eight hour range maybe if I was lucky. So I'm still amazed at exactly how long that took to kind of finish up. Um, it was on zero percent and zero minutes for a very long time. I'm going to go back and look at the recording and see exactly how long that was. Uh, it ended up with 760 watt hours and 10 hours and 30 something minutes of runtime on my full size refrigerator today, which, you know, that's that's not the same as running a uh, a heater, which is a constant source. I mean, it's definitely the, the wattage is going up and down. Sometimes it's a few watts as a fan's running inside. Sometimes it's more whenever the compressor kicks on. Sometimes it's more whenever the doors are open. And of course, we weren't trying to keep it running long. We were just using it as normal. In a crisis, we may not open the refrigerator as much, so it might keep it cooler. Maybe it would have run 11 hours, who knows? But uh, I was really surprised at how well um, that really worked. Um, now, as a energy efficiency test, I mean, it's probably not the best one. I mean, I ended up with, let me see, 76.61% um, of the energy, the 992 watt hours being able to pull through the AC watt. But of course, again, with it not really running constantly, there was a lot of times whenever like maybe just the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were on so I could check it on the app or, you know, the internal inverter was just running while it was waiting for another power draw. There were times when there was zero wattage coming um, from the battery bank into the refrigerator. It only used it whenever it needed it. So um, definitely not the most efficient pull as far as a, a power draw, um, but uh, right in line with what you would expect um, with the other 81 something percent that I hit whenever it was more of an efficient pool. Pretty amazing, really. And so uh, I'm very pleased with that. And hopefully, uh, you know, you were able to watch this video, see how it works in the real world, see how it works in a test, kind of get an overview of the product and help you to know if this is something that might be of benefit to you.